Hey everyone, Dave Allison with Allison Wealth and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the three kinds of retirement plan beneficiaries after the SECURE Act was passed in 2019 and recently in 2024, we just received some final regulations around distributions from these inherited IRA accounts. So if you've inherited money from a retirement plan owner in the last few years, or you're set to inherit money in the next few years, this video will be incredibly important on how you need to navigate the money in the plan, the withdrawals from the plan, the tax liability, and ultimately some of the strategies to help you mitigate taxes and manage the investments inside of these unique accounts. So let's jump right on into it. Under the SECURE Act, there's really three types of plan beneficiaries now. So if you've inherited money, you're going to fall into one of these three designations. The first one is a non-designated beneficiary or an NDB. The second one is a non-eligible designated beneficiary or what we'll refer to as an NEDB. And then the third is an eligible designated beneficiary or an EDB. So let's go on in and break down these three different types of plan beneficiaries. The first type is the non-designated beneficiary or NDB. The first thing to note is these are not people. What you're gonna see is that this beneficiary designation is typically in a state, a charity, or a non-qualifying trust, which is really a non-look-through trust. So if you have a family member that forgot to name a beneficiary on their IRA or 401k, by default, that IRA or 401k is gonna be payable to the estate of that family member. That would be an example of a non-designated beneficiary. Of course, if somebody decided to leave money to charity, a charity is a non-designated beneficiary. And then if money is left from an IRA or qualified plan into a trust, and it's not a look-through or sometimes known as a see-through or sometimes known as a conduit trust, that could potentially become a non-designated beneficiary as well. So since the passage of the SECURE Act, with non-designated beneficiaries, nothing really changed. Based on whether the IRA owner or plan participant dies before or after the owner's required beginning distribution date is gonna determine how the withdrawals must happen for the beneficiary. Now, as a reminder, the RBD date, that required beginning date, is April 1st after the year that the IRA owner or plan participant turns 72. Now, the major consideration here is that if the IRA owner or plan participant dies before their required beginning date, you as the beneficiary must withdraw all of the money out of that account and pay tax on it by the end of the fifth year after death. Now, if the owner dies on or after their required beginning date, required minimum distributions must be taken over the deceased IRA owner's remaining single life expectancy table. This means that you need to withdraw a certain amount out each and every year and pay tax on it if the original owner died on or after their required beginning date. But if the original owner died before their required beginning date, then there's no mandate on how much money you need to take out each of those five years. You just need to make sure that you've emptied the entire account by the fifth year. So there's a big difference in how you would take distributions. And if you mess up the rules here, there's some pretty serious consequences. For example, if you were mandated to take a required minimum distribution out each and every year and you don't do it, you could face up to a 25% penalty of that required distribution. So if there was a non-designated beneficiary, the 401k goes to the estate, you're ultimately the beneficiary, and let's say that the owner was past their required beginning date, 
and the distribution or the RMD was $50,000 a year and you accidentally missed it, that could be a $25,000 penalty for missing that required distribution. So this is really important when you're thinking about how you need to take distributions if the account was left to the estate charity or a non-qualifying trust. Now, a lot of beneficiaries are gonna be what's known as non-eligible designated beneficiaries or NEDBs. These are all of the beneficiaries out there who don't qualify as eligible designated beneficiaries, which we'll talk about next. This is really gonna be the children, the grandchildren, and most look through or conduit trusts that are gonna be named as the beneficiary of the 401k plan or IRA. Now, the big news after the SECURE Act of 2019 was passed is that you're no longer eligible to stretch out the distributions from an inherited IRA. You see, the old rules used to be that you could take a little bit of money out of these inherited IRAs raise each year based on your life expectancy. And that meant you could continue to defer taxes for longer. You would take out a smaller withdrawal, which meant a smaller amount of taxes were due. Now, if you're a non-eligible designated beneficiary, you have to take all of the withdrawals out over a 10-year time period. So the IRS really accelerates your withdrawal schedule, which means bigger withdrawals and more income tax, particularly in a time period where you already might be in a higher tax bracket because you have employment income, wages, or business income. Now, it's important to note when we talk about required minimum distributions that if you're a non-eligible designated beneficiary, there's going to be no annual required minimum distributions if the original account owner did not reach their required beginning date. So this means they passed away before they turned age 72 or 73 or potentially even 70 and a half, depending on the year of death, because that required beginning date has moved over the last several years. So that's one thing to take into account. It's also very important to note that annual required minimum distributions are required in years one through nine if the original account owner was past their required beginning date based on the longer of the beneficiary or the decedent's life expectancy. So this is a big new rule that just got finalized by the IRS in July of 2024. There was a lot of uncertainty around this rule. Many people passed away after 2020, their beneficiaries inherited IRAs, and they were not clear whether they actually had to take a distribution or not. The IRS now clarifies that if the original account owner was past their required beginning date, then the beneficiary must continue to take a required minimum distribution. But the IRS was nice enough to give those individuals a pass for the tax years through 2024. So essentially this is gonna begin in 2025. If you've inherited an IRA from somebody who is really over the age of 70 and a half in the last four or five years, I'd highly recommend reach out to our team so that we could help you determine if you need to start taking a required minimum distribution in 2025. And again, the account must be emptied in the end of the 10th year after the year of death. And so just like the previous category where you had five years to withdraw all the money out, if you're a non-eligible designated beneficiary, you now have 10 years to distribute all that money. Again, compressing your taxes, potentially pushing you into a much higher tax bracket. Now, if it's a Roth IRA that you're inheriting, there is no required minimum distributions, no matter what age the original Roth IRA owner was. That's one of the nice benefits of a Roth account. If you inherit a Roth account, you can continue to allow those investments to grow tax-free for another 10 years, 
but at the end of that 10th year, you need to deplete that Roth IRA. Now, if it's a Roth 401k, the IRS, based on the final regulations, is going to stipulate that if part of the money was in Roth 401k and part of the money was in a traditional 401k, then you do need to take distributions in those first 10 years. So that's a tricky rule to navigate based on this final regulation and something to be very mindful of. Because again, if you miss those required minimum distributions, there is an enormous penalty of 25% on what the distribution should have been. Last but not least are our eligible designated beneficiaries or EDBs. Now these are an entirely new category of beneficiaries created by the SECURE Act of 2019. There's five classes. There's a surviving spouse, a minor child up to the age of majority, but not grandchildren, a disabled individual under the strict IRS rules, a chronically ill individual, and there's some defined rules of what that means, and then an individual who is not more than 10 years younger than the IRA owner or the plan participant. Now, what's interesting about this group of beneficiaries is that they are exempt from the 10-year rule. They have a lot more options in terms of how they withdraw the money from the inherited IRA or plan and ultimately how they pay tax. The EDB must be a designated beneficiary, so they must be listed on the beneficiary form of the account, and the EDB status is determined at the date of the owner's death and cannot be changed. So for example, if an owner passed away and they had a child who was not disabled at the time the owner passed away, but two years later was in an accident and became disabled, they do not qualify as an eligible designated beneficiary because they were not disabled at the time of the owner's death. So again, some tricky rules to navigate here. If you might fall into one of these categories, I would highly recommend to reach out to our team for an introductory call and talk through your situation. But the couple that I wanna make special notation on is that if a minor child up to the age of majority inherits a retirement account, they are not gonna be subject to that 10-year rule up until the time they reach age of majority. Once they reach age of majority, let's say age 21, then they will be subject to deplete that entire inherited IRA by the 10th year following the age of majority. But under the final regulations that were just passed in July of 2024, if a minor child inherits a retirement account, they do have required minimum distributions to take out each and every year. So you need to account for that. In some cases, if a family has a special needs child or a disabled child, there's some unique planning strategies to incorporate how you might leave your IRAs or retirement accounts to a special needs trust for the benefit of that disabled child. So that's something I would recommend reaching out to our team to talk about. And last but not least, if your spouse passed away and you're a surviving spouse of a retirement account, there's really five options for a surviving spouse. Number one is you could treat the IRA as if it was your own IRA. You can roll over the inherited IRA into your own IRA, and this allows you to treat the assets as if they were always yours, which could be beneficial if you wanna delay required minimum distributions until you reach age 73. The second option is you could keep the IRA as an inherited IRA. This option requires you to start taking RMDs based on your life expectancy or within a 10 year period, depending on the circumstances. As I mentioned earlier, it really goes back to how old your spouse was when they passed away and if they had reached their required beginning date or not. 
The third option is you can elect to be treated as a deceased spouse. This means that the required minimum distributions for the surviving spouse would be delayed until the deceased spouse would have reached the age at which RMDs begin. Now, what's interesting is under the final regulations in July of 2024, the IRS stated that there's no time limit for this election. So you might be able to hold an inherited IRA, which allows you to start taking RMDs based on your life expectancy or have that 10 year time period. And then maybe four or five, six years later, you can switch it and actually be elected to be treated as the deceased spouse. But there's some complex rules you need to navigate known as hypothetical RMD rules that are now in force based on the SECURE Act. The fourth option is you could just withdraw the assets, which would cause you to pay tax on that entire withdrawal immediately. But if it's a small IRA account, maybe you're in a lower income tax bracket, that might be the easiest thing for you. And then last but not least, you could potentially disclaim the inheritance. If you don't need the assets or you want them to pass on to another beneficiary, you could disclaim the inheritance. It means you refuse the assets, allowing them to pass on to the contingent beneficiary. And this could be a unique estate planning strategy, specifically for a surviving spouse that has a high net worth and could potentially be subject to estate taxes, which are scheduled to get cut in half from an exemption standpoint at the end of next year. So again, a lot of complication around IRAs. These are very complicated retirement savings vehicles. They become even more complicated once the owner passes away for the beneficiary. And so if you have any questions or wanna talk through strategies to help maximize your investment, minimize your taxes, I highly encourage you reach out and schedule a complimentary introductory call with myself or our team at Allison Wealth Management.